Hi, my name is Petra from Hansel AMS, and in this video we are going to talk about cohorts. Cohorts is a very powerful analytic technique, and why this should interest you? Because it can help you to adjust your marketing strategy and increase retention rates. So in the end you will know what cohorts are about, and I will also guide you through some easy coding parts in Python, and well, let's get to it. So let's do some definition. How is the cohort defined? It is defined as a group of users with some common traits which are measured over a defined period of time. It is good for understanding the trends and patterns of customer behavior over the selected time frame and allows companies to adjust to it, tailor the product, services, campaigns, or budget more accordingly. Some quick example. Just to make it more real, imagine a guy named Frank, who through some heavy advertising grew curious about some local brand's aftershave, and after his wife approved, he finally got his hands on it and made a purchase. For any e-commerce business, it is crucial to have a good understanding about how the people are coming back and reorder. It is less costly to sell to an existing customer than to a new one, as the acquisition costs tend to be very high. If we follow the story further, then we would see that our guy liked the product and after two months returned to make another purchase for his friend, and after six months he bought it for himself again. So now, from a management perspective, we would like to understand how people similar to Frank behave. How can we group them? How do we gain some insights from it? And how do we interpret it? Are they happy with our products and stay, or does the group, which has something in common, dissolve quickly? Cohorts analysis can give you answers to these questions, and not only that, it helps also with understanding of the limits of customer acquisition costs, or when you should take some action to improve your customer retention. So let's see some common cohort types. We have time cohorts, size cohorts, and segments or behavior cohorts. Time cohorts. It's a group of users or customers who purchased a product during a specific time period. It can be quarterly, monthly, weekly, as you like it. Size cohorts most commonly refers to customer sizes. Small, middle, big companies who purchase a product during a specific time period. And then we have segment or behavior cohorts which purchase a specific product or service during selected time. Now let's have a look at the main components of the cohorts analysis. Generally, the outcome is formatted like a pivot table. The first column and each row represent the cohorts. In our case, it is a week of the first purchase, which means that all new customers which made their first purchase within this week do belong in the same cohort. The column names then represent the time which is in our case weeks, since the first purchase, or if you like, since the customer acquisition. When you look within the table in our example, each value there represents the count of active customers. So, for example, you can see that only 35 people out of 2,209 from the cohort week 48 were active three months later. But this outcome is not generally the end result, as it is not very user-friendly and no one wants to spend time comparing so many numbers. It makes it very hard to identify some trends or patterns. So a better approach is to convert them to percentages. The normalized values make it so much easier to get some insights much more quickly. Which brings me to the next point I want to talk about, about how to read the outcome. So you can look along the horizontal axis, to look at the cohort behavior with the progressing time, to look at the along vertical axis, to compare values between more, more cohorts with the same legs since the acquisition, or along the diagonal, to follow the same calendar weeks, could be months, weeks, to spot some seasonality or repeated patterns or trends. So let's look at the coding part. We will use a Jupyter notebook and libraries like Pandas and DateTime. In the end, you will get a pivot table which will describe cohort orders. Some knowledge of Pandas is desirable. 
First of all, we need to establish the connection to the database, and this part has been already done. Now all the needed libraries have to be imported. As noted before, we will use pandas and daytime. And you can see the import rate here. Within the next cell, with the help of this query, I'm going to import the main data. The end result will be then stored as a data frame. You can see the data frame right here. We have four columns and each row represents an order. Keep in mind that each customer can have multiple orders. Also note that the order number was included just to speed things up, but it can be easily calculated using order date. In the next step, we are creating two new columns. In the first step, we obtain first order date, and then using apply lambda functions and ISO calendar method, we are creating another column, first order week. You can see the between results right here. We still need two new more columns. The main idea is to create return week, so we could use it later when creating the final pivot table. This is why a column days, since the first order, which you can see right here, is created, and then it's divided by seven to get the weeks. If we would not do these steps, and we would just take the calendar weeks, imagine that the people ordering on the last day, let's say of calendar week one, would not have enough time to make a reorder. So we are making sure here that each new customer, after his or her, first purchase has seven more days to order again. So in the final steps, we are using the newest data frame to get the pivot for reorders. This is why you can see this filter right here. It tells you just that the order number has to be greater than zero here, there, and also for the first orders, with the filter for the first orders right here. After the final merging, you can see the end result. So each row here is describing a specific cohort. Here you can see how many first orders were made by that cohort, how many orders were done then in the same week, meaning if some customer made two orders within the first week and the next week. Please keep in mind that this is not covering the forecasting about cohorts. If you want more info, please get in touch with us. So this was everything about cohorts. If you liked it, please like and subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming videos. Also, please do feel free to reach out in case you have some questions. And also, have a nice day! Thank you.